Hello and welcome to For Further Review. Today I have as my guest Mr. Gary Anderson, who is the Finance and Administrative Services Director of Murfreesboro City Schools. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Gilbert. How are you this evening? Could you tell us a little bit about your job, please? Uh, my job, Finance Administrative Services. I'm over 10 different departments in the school district, all supportive of the academics. I'm not over academic areas or over human resources, but pretty much anything that supports student learning in the classroom is what we try to do in our departments. And part of that job, of course, is the budget. Is the budget, right. A big part is the finance of the school district. Uh, we are currently uh, proposing tonight for the board's uh, review and, and hopefully approval a budget of about $52.5 million in revenues on regular general purpose monies. And then later in the year, we'll have the federal programs monies, which is about, about 8 to $9 million in addition to that. We also have the extended school program budget which we'll be uh, voting on, and the school nutrition budget. So really the board looks at many different aspects of funding a school system, and a lot of people don't realize that the money that comes into a school system comes from many different sources. For example? Well, for example, we get state money, which is the uh, what's called BEP, which is the Basic Education Program Funds, and that's the money that the state has established to do the basic education of our K-12 through children in the state. We also get local tax dollars. We get uh, a percentage share based on enrollment of the uh, tax monies collected in Rutherford County. And we also, be, because we're a city school system, we get city tax dollars on top of that. We get additional uh, state revenues from other categories, and we do get some, some federal money that goes into our general purpose budget. So it's really quite an extensive array of different funding sources that come into a school system. And what makes Murfreesboro City Schools unique is the fact that it is a city school system and that it, is got, it does have partial funding from the city government. Could you talk a little bit about the budget process? How does this all begin? Well, the budget process is one of the most exciting times of the year for finance people. Uh, what it is is we start way back uh, in, before the end of the calendar year, and we make up a calendar of how the budget will be prepared. But basically the first thing we do is we send out forms uh, and ask our principals and our department heads to fill out uh, questionnaires. One is on the facilities that they have, are the facilities safe? Are they clean? Do they need certain things done? And another one is, another form that we send out is based on the programs that they have. Do they, do they have the appropriate resources for personnel, for technology, for their facilities? Is there anything that we need to change or adjust? And not only do we ask things that they need, we ask is there anything that they currently have that they don't need? Could you talk a little bit about the changes that you've seen in the budget over the last few years? Um, the changes in the budget, I'll go to the revenue side first because every budget is obviously a revenue and expense picture of what's going on. The biggest changes was um, two years ago we received what was called ARA money. It was the American Reinvestment and Renovation Act monies. And we received quite a few, uh, well over uh, almost $2 million of money for that. And that was federal money that came in and it had a limited lifespan. We had to spend the money within two years. Then we, then we received um, education jobs bill money which came in from the federal government. These were all stimulus programs to get things going. And then we received race to the top money. The state of Tennessee was fortunate enough to get uh, about a half a billion dollars that came in. Now that helped our funding source on that side. But one of the, one of, and of course, having that additional revenue gave us opportunities to establish different programs and things. But I guess one of the one of the biggest changes is how we went about spending that money and establishing our budget. Uh, in the past, we would uh, establish, uh, just for example, for in-service meetings or training for teachers, we pretty much allow people to go to different things of different interest and cover different areas. But this past year, we focused on professional learning communities, which had a lot of collaboration within the schools. And what that did was it, re it reduced the amount of money we had to spend on having people train because I, we did our in-house training, brought people in, and it was very focused on collaboration. And I think 
think that's one of the biggest changes. We also looked at how do we best utilize our other resources through watching our utility usage by keeping an eye on that. We've been able to reduce our utility bills, geothermal at one of our schools, and now, and now we've applied for energy grants and energy loans, interest-free loans that basically pay back what we save in energy pays the whole loan back. So we are looking at exciting times of this summer putting in new lighting at our older schools and we have now got word that there's another uh, grant, that are, I'm sorry, another loan that we'll be looking at in addition to that. So as you can see our focus has been not just on spending more money but how do we best serve the community by the, using the funds we have to the, to the most usefulness we can get out of it. One of the other things with which you've been involved in recent years has been negotiations. And uh, at the board meeting tonight, of course, we'll be looking at finishing those, that process. Could you talk a little bit about the negotiations process and what, what that even means? Sure. Negotiations are established in uh, 1978. A law was established by the state of Tennessee to have uh, school districts allow their teachers to form an association. And Tennessee Education Association came in as kind of like a big umbrella for that. But what the law allowed was for teachers to form an association to negotiate on their behalf different characteristics of their jobs, wages, salaries, benefits, um, things about um, work environment, things about the discipline, different aspects of their job. And the negotiation process basically was established where the association would meet with representatives of the of the school board and, and, and it could be school board members but in, in Murfreesboro City's case it's always been they appoint someone to those positions to negotiate. The two teams would get together and negotiate what, what uh, each side wanted in, in the negotiation process. Over the years, that, that sometimes it could be extremely contentious. Uh, things would be asked for, things would be denied, and, and, it, and it could uh, really develop into, a, into a, a very bad situation. And that's one of the reasons that the state is looking at the, all those different laws and see what they're going to be doing with them. But in Murfreesboro, the tenor has really changed in the fact that now it's more of a collaborative uh, evolution of the process. Collaboratively, the association and the and the representatives of the school board get together and talk about what do they really need for the district? What is in the best interest of student learning? So really it's changed over the years from the first establishment of, of the uh, Negotiation Act to the way Murfreesboro City has morphed into the uh, evolution that we have now. Okay. If you had to give three things that you really see in Murfreesboro's future, what, what would those three things be? What would be exciting you about the future of Murfreesboro? Normally a finance guy loves numeric things, but numeric questions are not one of my favorite things. What do I see as the future? I see a very bright future for Murfreesboro City. We have the collaborative environment within the district, the teachers working together with the administrators, with the leadership, with the focus being on not just teaching, but on student learning. So I see that as one of the best things, the, excite, the exciting part. I see uh, another exciting thing is the involvement of the community in the school district. Uh, we have reached out to the community uh, more and more. And I think the first thing people think about is the Franklin Heights thing uh, where we have preschools set up. We have preschools set up in three different locations off, off our campus. We also have the mobile health unit that has gone out and established uh, ties with the community, supporting our students and supporting the families. So I see those as some really big, really big things. Just really the focus of the district and the excitement there of, hey, we're getting things done. We're going the right way. One of the things that, that I always ask, and I'm going to ask you too, even though you're, you're the finance man, but I know that you have a strong background in education. What advice would you give to someone who wants to become a teacher? Um, it, you know, that's a, a great question because when people ask me that, says, well, I want to be a teacher, what do I do? Uh, and, and, and basically I try to talk to people who are young and I say, volunteer, get involved with youth activities, get involved with organizations that deal with children, learn what it is to serve children and what it's about to teach children that they learn. That's the first thing I do. And of course, you got to go through all the, you know, the academic courses and the education pieces. But I say, learn kids, learn what you like about education, and focus on what you can do best for the kids. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and we thank you for your support of Murfreesboro City Schools.